Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, Romans chapter 3, verse 6, and Lamentations chapter 5, verse 22. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for helping us as we learn to trust in you, as we learn to lean on you and not on ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Hebrews chapter eight, verse 12, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. All right. And so this is actually um, a reflection into the thousand year reign, but it is also uh, for us now, right? He's going to be merciful towards our iniquities and remember our sins no more. We can feel that. We know that. We live that, right? How he's washed away our sins through his precious blood. And in that time um, uh, that he's actually speaking of, um, reflecting forward toward foreshadowing towards is the thousand year reign right where we will know God fully and be known by him and so um you know when we look at this we can see how God is a just God I'm going to go ahead and read the second verse um Romans chapter 3 verse 6 by no means for then how could God judge the world this is actually speaking of um, how um, even though we sin, right, we sin and and we do horrible things as human beings um, and it makes God look even more righteous. Um, the, the thought here is that he's talking about uh, people who are saying, oh, well, if, if my sin makes God look even more righteous, then it, is he wrong to inflict wrath upon me? Because it's making him more glorified that, you know, as I do evil, he, he is even more glorified right so why not just do evil that good may come right why not just continue in sin so that you know um it makes god look even better is he wrong to inflict wrath on me when it's making him look better and it says by no means for then how could god judge the world oh believe me when god judges the world he is just about it right he has every right and and we have every wrong right we have done wrong 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 right but he's saying that he's going to be merciful towards our sin so when we come under that covering right he's going to be merciful he he's going to have grace on us it says for i will be merciful toward their iniquities that's that steeped in evil right it says and i will remember their sins no more so god is gonna wipe away all of that transgression he's gonna wipe away all of that sin he's gonna be merciful towards it meaning that instead of raining down wrath on us he's gonna hold back that wrath and so does it mean that that he you know it's it's for any reason that we've done of course not no he's just being merciful we deserve it we deserve every bit of it right by no means um we deserve every part of wrath we deserve every every reward that sin brings and yet he's going to be merciful towards us because we have come under his blood covering his righteousness this is by no means for then how could god judge the world right he couldn't judge the world if he was partial or, or he gave in because, oh yeah, it does make me look good. No, sin is sin. You can't, you can't, um, you can't justify it anyway, no matter how you put it, right? No matter how the enemy wants to spin it, it's sin, right? And, and if there's any mercy to be given, it's being given by God's mercy, right? It's his hand that is giving the mercy, He's being merciful towards our iniquities. Yes, we deserve the wrath, but he gave us his son. We accepted that free gift of grace and he is going to be merciful towards us because of it. Let's look at the third verse, Lamentations chapter five, verse 22. Unless you have utterly rejected us and you remain exceedingly angry with us. 
And so, you know, God is going to take us as believers to a place, a heavenly place. Do we deserve it? No, but his son died. So he's, he's providing justification for those who re receive that free gift. But you know what? For those who will be left behind, there's going to be a feeling of dejection, right? Forever. Sure. You're going to feel as if um, you've been rejected forever. Right. And it's not true. It's not true. It will come to an end. It's going to feel like utter chaos forever. Those seven years of tribulation. But it says, unless you have utterly rejected us and you remain exceedingly angry with us during that time, Israel was going through because Babylon attacking them. Babylon was attacking them and, and causing them to be thwarted, right? He he was causing them to starve. He was causing death. He was causing chaos. So in their minds, you know, today was forever, right? When you are being attacked, right? Today, it is it, it, a place of, of fury and it's a place of wrath. And, and that, that, that feeling doesn't just go away. Right. And so they're going to feel as if they are in um, a, a place of utter rejection. But God, but God is going to bring the ones who submit to his lordship to a place of, of contentment again. He's going to bring them to a place of servanthood, but they are going to have a place in heaven. Right. If they if they see God's face, if they seek his forgiveness. Right. So God is going to be merciful toward their sins and remember their merciful toward their iniquities and remember their sins no more. And so we have to be in a place right now where we can accept that free gift now, right? God is justified in, in rewarding punishment. God is justified in, in sending wrath, but you know, he's being merciful towards us and he's even going to be merciful toward them. But in due time, right? After that wrath is, has been poured out and we need to pray for them. We need to pray for ourselves, right? That we accept that free gift and that we don't continue in sin, that, you know, we should not continue in sin, that grace may abound. That is not the way that we we do it, right? We we listen to the voice of God. We heed the voice and the instruction of God and we follow the Holy Spirit and, and we we receive that forgiveness that he is giving to us. Amen. He has not utterly rejected us. He has not um, um, given up on us. And, and even for the people who will be in the tribulation, he has not given up on you, right? He has not given up on you. He is still God. He still loves you. And yes, this moment, this season will pass, even though it feels like it's forever. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for everything you've done for us, God. You are a wise God. You are all-knowing. Yes, our sin does make you look even more righteous, even more good, and that is right. And we deserve everything that sin brings, but we thank you for your son and the blood covering that covers us. Forgive us for our sins, Lord God. Do not remember our iniquities. Be merciful towards our iniquities and remember our sins no more. We love you. We give you praise and glory and honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.